Jews. Somalia. Jews. Somalia. Thought you ought to know. You're Somali Jews. Sort of. What do I mean? Well, watch the video. That's what I made it for. So, anyway, not too surprising. There's historically large Jewish populations in Yemen and Ethiopia, so it's not at all crazy that they were in Somalia too. Despite that, this video is probably going to be semi-controversial in a certain sense, for reasons I'll get into later. In Somalia, there's this caste system. I've heard several descriptions of it. Like, apparently, there were brothers Somale and Sab, and the Somal uh, descendants are, are nobility, and the Sab descendants are, like, agro-pastoral, like, peasants, basically, and this is the caste system they use. And though, technically, I think they're still Sab, there are, there's a third artisanal caste that, you know, and all of these have, like, ethnic tribal components. But so for the this artisanal caste, there's the Miggen, who are hunters and, and circumcisers and stuff, the Tumal, who are smiths and leather workers, and the group of main interest today, the Yibir who were tanners and magicians, sorcerers, etc. The other ostracized groups among them being, being uh, uh, the Midgans, uh, the Tumals, uh, and there are other groups in the south, but mainly, mid, the, mainly the, the largest group, I believe, are the Midgans. They are also called the Gaboye. Uh, they are, in general, the ostracized groups are, are the craftsmen of the society. They use like some words like Kaboy, they like use it, Yubir, they're in a minority. They don't get married, we don't get each other married from them as the culture. Because if I, if I love, uh, if I make a relationship with a lady or the, I got one to marry another tribe, then my family is gonna, first thing they're gonna ask me that my family is which tribe. So right off the bat, Yubir, Yibri. Israel? I don't know. Makes you think. The, the, uh, when we, the Yibir is a, is a single, uh, it's a, it describes one person, but the plurality of, of the Yibir society is called Yibro. So, as I said, unsurprisingly, given the location, Jews have been present in Somalia for thousands of years. But surprisingly, there's little scholarly documentation of their presence. Somali traditional history says that the Yibir are descendants of Muhammad Hanif of Hargeisa, who was a pagan according to Wikipedia, but that's Fugazi, I believe, because of what Hanif means. Very interesting, but I think I'll save it for another time. Okay, all right, fine, I'll get into it. So Hanif, in Islam, is a person who didn't worship idols and followed Abrahamic traditions. These are people in pre-Islamic times who renounced idolatry and followed some or all of the tenets of the religion of Ibrahim. An Arabic to English dictionary defines it as true believer, orthodox, one who scorns the false creeds surrounding him and professes the true religion. Wow. Some people say that being Hanif was distinct from Christianity and Judaism, but... I don't know, it sounds pretty Jewy to me. Abu Bakr, 
who, according to Sunni Islam, was the true successor to the Prophet Muhammad, is said to have been a Hanif during the Age of Ignorance, and potentially Muhammad himself, peace be upon him, due to being a descendant of Ishmael and therefore Ibrahim. Yo! Some people say Hanifs didn't really exist, but there are pre-Islamic sources that say they did, including this Greek source from the 5th century that describes them and says they didn't eat pork. Okay, very cool to me. Anyway, the point of all that is to say Buddy Prowley wasn't pagan. He's also referred to as Buru Ba'ayer, which some sources also say is pejorative, but I don't know for what. My bad. Anyway, we'll get to him in a second. First, let's get archaeological. So, I found an archaeological study that reviewed pre-Islamic Christian burial sites in Somalia, and they seemingly accidentally encountered an ancient Jewish graveyard around the Dubato village in the Hargeisa region. They found doc and documented a hundreds of years pre-Islamic grave site where the gravestones were marked with Israelite symbols, including the Star of David. They attribute this graveyard to the Tumal tribe, who they claim are also, quote, thought to have a Hebrew origin, end quote. Okay, cool. So, several of these, of these outcast tribes. So, Jews in the region, regular, they're two of the very few SSR Jewish kingdoms in the area. There was the kingdom of Simeon, the Beta Israel kingdom in Ethiopia and Eritrea, established in the 4th century and lasting until maybe the 1300s, mentioned by Benjamin of Tudela, shoutouts. And there was the Himyarite kingdom in Yemen, which was Jewish from 390 CE and lasted until 525. So it's not surprising that Jews ended up in Somalia with Jews on either side of them. Also, the Lemba are said to have traveled this path from Yemen all the way down to South Africa. Yeah. Also, also, according to the ancient Ge'ez manuscripts and Arabic sources, Queen Gudit, who was of Ethiopian Beta Israel extraction, led the Damat kingdom's armies to ransack Aksum around 979. She is very cool, and I would probably like to do a video on her at some point. According to the Ethiopian Chronicles, she was upset about her treatment as a Jewish princess under Christian rule, and so she raised an army and kicked some ass all over the Horn of Africa. The dates from sources in the Ge'ez and Greek, and even in contemporary to the time Arabic sources, all line up so we can be relatively certain when this happened, which is, you know, around the end of the 900s. So not exactly pre-Islam, but pre-Islam in the region. Fun fact, she was featured in an Age of Empires expansion. Your deeds had finally arrived to destroy the cradle of Ethiopian civilization. I shivered. The Hafiori was legendary. Wow, very cool. So yeah, the Ibir probably came over from Ethiopia. Zantale, the wife of a powerful 12th century Yabir king, our guy previously mentioned, Muhammad Hanif or Bu'ur Bayar, is buried in Harar, and apparently this is an important pilgrimage site for some Yabir. While the Yabir were established in the region pre 12th century, potentially predating the more powerful clans like the Izak, they were the last to convert to Islam. Looking at Somali people discourse online, there's a big thing of calling people Lantir, which I think is long lineage, and Langab, which is short lineage, that I'm not going to get into, but I saw you beer being called Langab. This is not definitive, and if anyone has more context, let me know, because it's, it's kind of interesting to me. Anyway, they are mistreated in similar ways to the Falasha in Ethiopia. Many Ethiopian Orthodox Christians traditionally believed that Jews, in particular those who work with metal, have the ability to transform into a mythical creature known as a Buddha or a were hyena. Even today in the city of Gondar, small pieces of hyena fur 
are sold to be worn as an amulet for protection against the Buddha, who some still believe will visit you when you are sleeping and drain your life force. They're also related to a North Kenyan tribe, the Libri... Libre? Sorry. But the Libre are honored for their spiritual ways, while the Ibir are mostly despised. King Buurbayar, according to the story, was dethroned by Sheikh Yusuf Ahmed Kaunain, a prominent Muslim scholar, and his victory is still remembered in Somali culture as the victory of Islam over the pre-Islamic religions of the region. There was uh, an encounter between the two, and uh, not much is said about that encounter, but uh, the, the, the result of that encounter was that they challenged one another. And it said that Sheikh Yusuf al uh, Ba'ir said, I can split that mountain. Uh, so it's like a duel. What can you do? Can you better that? I can split that mountain. And Sheikh Yusuf al Kunan said, OK, go ahead and split it. Uh, Ba'ir Ba'ir split the mountain. And, and stood, you know, in the middle uh, between the two halves. And Sheikh Yusuf al Konin made the two halves come together, <laughs> thereby killing Bu'ur Ba'ir. So that's how Bu'ur Ba'ir, that's the story. The Yibir today still suffer for this. Even though there are other Hebraic originating tribes, they seem to skate by, like the aforementioned Tamal, uh, Mad Madiban, and Gaboye people. Anyway. So, to keep the history going, but skipping way, way ahead, in the 1880s, Yemeni Jews start showing up. They settle in areas like Berbera, Zela, Mogadishu, and Brava as part of the spread through Ottoman and Ottoman-adjacent areas. But in 1905, the Italians established Italian Somaliland, which they held on until 1941. While it was okay for Jews at first, things changed when Italy went fascist, particularly when Italy became the type of race science fascist that the Germans were on. While Italian fascists mostly let the Ethiopian Jews rock, it seems they did not feel the same way about Somali Jews, probably because they were closer to the coast, and burned many of their synagogues. There are still ruins in Obia, but many other synagogues were completely leveled and built over. Despite that, the Yemenite Jewish community survived and had a renaissance after World War II. But in the 70s, when Somalia joined the Arab League, most of these Yemenite Somali Jews emigrated. I found an unsourced estimate that today only 5 to 10 of these Yemenite Somali Jewish families remain in Somalia, which is sad. But anyway, these people seem to have little contact with the Yabir and definitely no, no revival of their, their pre-Islamic ways. So today, there may be 25,000 to 30,000 Yabir spread across the various countries in the Horn of Africa, like Somalia, Somaliland, which I won't get into, Djibouti, Ethiopia, and Kenya, basically anywhere where there's a Somali presence. Okay, so they're, they're customs. This is tough, since most of them, practically all of them, haven't practiced Judaism in like a thousand years, and those that do keep it all the way low. But there is an interesting custom which shows how they are treated by society. Since they're the sorcerer slash amulet maker cast, there's a custom of giving a Yibir a payment for a blessing uh, when the, you have a newborn baby. And they'll give you an amulet for the mother and an amulet for the baby. Some sources say it's a blessing, 
and some say it's so that the beard themselves don't curse the baby. Uh, this man was praying for us, was blessing us, okay? And we were not allowed to say amin. Amin, by the way, is amin. Amin in, the, uh, in, in Arabic, it's amin. And amin, same thing. So we were admonished when we said uh, amin. Why? I mean, what is the origin of that? My thinking is that originally, probably, they had a different religion. Ish. So is it foo? Well, no, but you wouldn't call them Jewish, right? Interestingly, the vast majority of the Yibir don't call themselves Jewish. And a large number say that it's misinformation spread by other tribes to justify the discrimination they face. It's actually mainly the rest of Somali society that claims they're Jews. Despite this, and I don't want to blow your spot, sorry, there's good historical and archaeological evidence that says that they are indeed the descendants of ancient Israelites. To my knowledge, they haven't actually been genetically tested. Probably because they don't want Judaism. But the Gez and the grave sites and Queen Judit and King Bur Ba'ayar and the name Yibir and the rest of Somali society... I'm willing to bet the results would come back Jewy, should they be tested. So, how are the Yibir and the other related groups doing today? Well, while there are some crypto Jews... Okay, quick side point. There's an interesting article that documents communication with said crypto Jews, semi-anonymously. But... That's not really much to go on, and any generalizations you can make from that are probably inaccurate. So, anyway, while there are at least a handful of cryptos, the vast majority of these Semitic descendants have long since converted to Islam, with the last being the Yabir in the 12th century. Somalia is not a good place to be Jewish. So Somalians don't like Jews? So what is it about the Jewish people that you don't like? They are born into Islam. Actually, I got this comment, this amazing comment, in Somali the other day. Wild. Never thought I'd see that. I get the best comments. So while they themselves might not consider themselves Jewish, enemies of the show the Jewish voice, those, those Christians who look for Jewish Africans and, and reach out to convert them to Christianity, they, they, they know. They know what's up. They're on them. I hate you. Jewish voice, you, you, you worship the man God. The cults emperor, my father! You fucking idiot. But yeah, all, all these minority clans, but the Yibir especially, still face intense discrimination in Somalia. Up until recently, it was apparently forbidden for a Yibir to be educated, which, yikes. Also, the Yibir apparently supported dictator Mohamed Siad Barre and faced reprisals when he was overthrown in 1991. So the Somali Civil War is still technically ongoing, and I don't want to get into it, but it was originally a Cold War conflict, and Barre was a Marxist, despite eventually being an ally to the United States, but also China, but not the Soviets. Wild. Super interesting. Look into it after this video. 
Anyway, the New York Times dropped an article in the year 2000 when there was a big push to form a Somali government, which I guess didn't technically happen until 2012. And the plan was to allocate one seat in Parliament for the Ybir. So they interviewed the guy who would sit in that seat. His awesome title was His Highness Ahmed Jama Hersi, the Sultan of the Somali Jews, which is so cool to me. But also, by his own admission, he knows nothing about Judaism and has no plans to learn. Which I get, right? If you're, if you're trying to make your way in Somali society and being Jewish has, has been such a, such a negative, or being Jewish descendant has been such a negative for you for 800 years while you've faithfully practiced Islam, I, I get why there's resistance to reconnect. Maybe resistance is even the wrong word. Why there's not any desire to reconnect. You just want to integrate with society. To kind of reinforce that point, uh, another Yabir who was interviewed for the New York Times article, Muhammad Ali Hassan, was asked if there was any intention of re-embracing Judaism, to which he said, quote, that would only make more problems, end quote. Sheesh. However, An anonymous commentator on the above article, which I did not find on the New York Times because I'm paywalled out, but instead found on somalisforjesus.blogspot.com, salute, said, quote, Yes, we are Yibir. We proud to be Jews originally, but these other Somalis deal us badly. Sorry. End quote. I, I think I get it, right? Go, go be the best you you can be, you know? And I hope society stops discriminating against you and that you can be the best Muslims if that's what you want to be. There are a lot of clans, but the whole clan, we are from Somali. It comes to marriage, you cannot, it's not allowed, it's not allowed. But in my, in my, in my idea, I don't believe that. Because we're the same people, we have the same religion, same, like same color, same ethnic group. So we just Somalis. I don't really like to divide people. But uh, inshallah, we will get united one day. But if you do want to be Jewish, I mean, I guess you are genetically at some point, maybe a thousand years back. So conclusion, Jewish? No, not really, but of Hebraic origin. Salute. A civil war broke out and the once mighty empire began to crumble. Of course, your did A soft snoring drew my attention to my son. The lad was already sleeping.